Hello and welcome to today's Delta Credit Tip. Today we're talking about unforeseen consequences of COVID. We all know the easy stuff, but there are some unforeseen consequences that have affected us financially due to COVID. We're going to go over three good and three bad, so stay tuned. We're going to fill you in on today's Delta Credit Tip. Hello and welcome back to today's Delta Credit Tip. I'm Michael Holmes of Delta Credit Restoration, bringing you yet more information to help you in your credit restoration process. Today we're talking about unforeseen financial consequences to COVID, okay? Now we know all the easy stuff, right? We know the job market's down, we all know employment's down, we all know the easy stuff, but what we have noticed over the last several months are now the consequences of the consequences, right? And so what we wanna do is share some of this information with you so that hopefully it could be a preventative measure for you. We can be a little bit more preventative versus corrective, you know what I'm saying? And sharing this will hopefully give you that ammunition. If you like the information, give us that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so that every week as we come out with more information to help you in your credit restoration process, you get it as we get it, all right? So let's jump right on in. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna talk about three good things and three bad things that we've noticed with this COVID. And we're gonna start with the bad, all right? The first thing that we've noticed throughout this COVID environment is um, people needing help from the help, all right? And it may sound kind of weird, but when we all signed up for these um, uh, moratoriums on payment, these 90 days of no payment, what we didn't realize because we didn't sign anything with these creditors is that at the end of the 90 days, those 90 days worth of payments are now due. So what that's leading to are now late pays, but more importantly, for those people that are doing this with their mortgage, well now you've got 90 days worth of mortgage payments that you have to come up with. So now that you can't make those payments, well what do you do? Well now we gotta look at a modification. Now that's another 90 days of non-payment that you may go through because they're gonna put you through that trial period. So now we're gonna have six months worth of non-payment and if that doesn't work out, now we're looking at trying to file bankruptcy to save our home. So we really wanna start asking questions to your credit card companies, your mortgage companies, your uh, auto lending companies and start finding out, well, what is the back side story to the help. What sort of balloon payment am I gonna be required to make? What sort of consequences to the help am I now facing? Because for a lot of people, they need now more help from the help than they needed in the first place, okay? Now, the uh, second thing that we've noticed, which is a direct uh, credit repair issue, is that the Fair Credit Reporting Act a lot of what exists in that law has been kind of tweaked, right? So if you are on a, in a time crunch to get your credit fixed and you're disputing things with the bureaus, the bureaus can take as much time as they need to get to your investigation. Now, the Fair Credit Reporting Act right now dictates that it, they only have 30 days to do this. But since the country is in a national state of emergency, that gives the bureaus an infinite amount of time to work on your dispute. And until we are 90 days past the state of emergency being up, being uh, lifted, they're gonna have that ability to kind of drag out that process. And so if you have to get something done quickly, well, that might not happen so readily now in that dispute process, all right? Now, the third thing that we've noticed that's really uh, getting people uh, in a bad position is rent. Now, for those of you that were around during the last recession that we had that ended somewhere around 2013, the consequence to that was that we had a bunch of people that, I mean, back then, at least in the state of Florida, we had one in 10 in... Uh, bankruptcy and one in seven in foreclosure. It was a huge 
financial epidemic. And that all ended around 2013. But what happened after that is that those people that had good jobs had bad credits as a result of the recession. So we had a whole lot of people that had income, but not, but were not lendable. So what do people who can't buy do? They rent. So if the supply is decreasing because we have people that are extending their lease, that are putting off buying a home, right? And more people are losing their home and going into renting, then the rent prices are starting to go up and they're already high. And this is already a simple supply and demand as the demand goes up or goes down, or I'm sorry, as the demand goes up and the supply goes down, your price goes up, right? And so now what you're going to want to do is start having that conversation with your landlord. Hey, my lease is due in 90 days. Hey, my lease is due in six months or whatever. What's going to happen with my rent? Because you may find because your hours have been reduced, you, you don't have a lot of cash stockpiled. So a first and last month's rent and all that other stuff that you're going to need to move may not be a possibility for you right now. So we want to make sure that uh, you're having that conversation with your landlord so that you can anticipate what's going to happen at the end of your lease. All right. But enough of the doom and gloom, right? Let's go into some of the positive things that have happened as a result of COVID financially, at least. Well, the first thing, you know, there are two types of people in COVID right now, those that benefited from it and those that did not benefit from it. Right. Um, and a lot of people <clears throat> are now decreasing their spending, right? And they're not going out. So a lot of the extracurricular spending is out. A lot of them are working from home. So the commute costs are down, right? Uh, there, there's a lot of less extracurricular stuff going on, right? No more Disney trips for a while, right? So as a result, as a matter of fact, in April, we had the highest number of people with a positive savings balance in recorded history of the United States. Now, obviously they didn't keep that money. Most people didn't keep that money up to now, you know, now that we're at the end of 2020, but a lot of people curb their spending. So really this is an opportunity for us to relook at some of the money that we have left over and try to reallocate them to categories and to bills and credit cards and all these other things that could potentially really help us get ahead. So start noticing those dollars and start making a plan for them so that it can actually benefit you as you go through the COVID crisis. All right. Second positive thing. Um, as a result of us not going places, especially those of you that are now working from home, uh, your insurance rates on your vehicles should drop. If they haven't already done this for you because everybody else around you has stopped driving too. Remember your insurance isn't just about you. It's about you and those around you. So you should already have experienced a decrease in your insurance, your car insurance. If you haven't, call them and say, hey, look, I'm not driving 20 miles to work anymore. I'm walking 20 feet in my pajamas to my computer, right? I want my insurance rates reduced. Or you can expand your coverage so that you're even more covered going into the future. Number three, another um, third consequence. Uh, everybody knows about the stimulus checks, right? Everybody knows about the PPP loans and all that stuff that was offered. But what a lot of people don't realize is that not only did for profits get money, but a lot of nonprofits did too. And as a matter of fact, in most counties, pretty much every county, they have what they call a community action agency. And these are agencies that have teamed up together with like places like career source and other places to help people in need. And they have millions and millions of dollars that were allocated to them specifically to, hover, to help you cover things like rent, daycare, um, education costs, uh, name it. There's money there for you and they're giving it away. 
So if you're having problems because of COVID and you're not getting any reprieve from the government right now as far as a stimulus check, as far as the near future is concerned, and the for-profit companies aren't really helping out, go to the nonprofits, call your community action agency, find out what programs they have in place. They can cover everything from food to rent to your commute costs to daycare. I mean, they cover everything. Uh, electric bill. So if you're having troubles paying those bills, they can help you. And they, again, have millions. So look it up. Every county has it. Uh, and, and, and they need to give the money away because if they don't, they're going to lose it. They want to give you the money. All right. So again, three good things, three bad things. Hopefully this information is helpful. Uh, we've, we've, we've got a lot of clients right now that are really struggling and some that are really taking advantage of the situation. Hopefully this information helps. If so, give us that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell and tune in next week as we bring you more information to help you make a choice, make a change. Delta.